Washington to Moscow, New York to Paris, Rome to Jerusalem. The prophecies of the Bible are being fulfilled. Stand by for J.R. Church and today's Prophecy in the News. On our last two television programs, we took a look at the life of Christ from the viewpoint of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and we took a look at the life of Christ from a, 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 a viewpoint of Israel. Now, in our first uh, program, we looked at uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, actually through Acts, mm -hmm. uh, as a reflection of the Torah. And uh, on today's program, we're going to look further into this incredible subject. You will, I think, be absolutely <coughs> astounded as we look at this program today. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me Jewish methods of interpretation, and we're mm. referring to the life of Christ here. Well, you know, J.R., for the last uh, 40 to 45 years, uh, Christian expositors have been saying that the greatest prophetic sign of our age was the return of Israel and the, the foundation of the State of Israel in 1948. And prophecy students realize that Israel is the centerpiece of God's prophetic timetable. But now we're also beginning to see that Israel and the symbols that are associated with Israel uh, tell us a great deal about prophecy. And for this reason, we've been looking at some of the Jewish methods of interpretation in an effort to uh, clarify, I suppose, our view of prophecy. What's going on in the latter days? Because God is preparing to elevate his people to a primacy on this planet. And it's going, there will be an administration of government coming right out of Jerusalem, administered all over the entire globe from the throne of David. Messiah is going to sit there. And for this reason, Jewish elements of interpretation, ways of looking at the Bible are very important to us today. Now, to begin with, in order to understand this Jewish method of interpretation, we need to uh, get a, at least a brief glimpse of Christian hermeneutics, that is, Christian methods of interpretation. And uh, I put them basically into three categories. First of all, the first method of interpretation is the primary interpretation of Scripture, that is, what it says. It's the history of the book, the past. The second method of Christian interpretation would be the practical application of Scripture. That would deal with the present. And the third method of Christian interpretation I call prophetic implication of Scripture. That deals with the future. So we have the past, present, and future in these methods of interpreting the Scripture. That is the primary interpretation, what the book says. That's the simplistic, simple way. What does it say? Second, the practical application of Scripture, which, by the way, is very important. We need honesty, integrity, ethics, love, etc. But that third method of interpretation has often been overlooked by Christian theologians. That is the prophetic implications of Scripture. Uh, would you say, Gary, that would put it rather succinctly? Indeed, J.R., and, and ideally in Christian theology there is a walking balance. It has been said that the Christian walk is a matter of keeping your balance. Now, on the one hand, practical application of doctrine, maintaining uh, obedience and a life of faith that would be pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, having, uh, remaining open to His leading in the Spirit to the marvels in the Word of God. Uh, if you become too fixed in the primary applicational level, if you become locked into a basic system of interpretation, mm -hmm. it's as though the lid is put on. And there are some people who uh, I think think of, uh, of deep prophetic Bible study as a little bit dangerous yes. uh, because it can unbalance you. You can, as you've heard the expression, you can go to seed in prophecy or you can go off the deep end in prophecy and get out of balance. And so yes. Christian interpreters have been very concerned about keeping one's balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yet there must be a balance between the primary interpretation and the prophetic implication. And you, this, I think, is the secret of Christian exposition or Christian interpretation. Now, with that as our premise, our basis, let us look at Jewish methods of interpretation because they add, I think, a tremendous amount of insight into uh, 
uh, into our view of the scripture. Um, the Jews have four basic uh, levels of interpretation. One is the Mishnah level, there is the Gemara level, the Midrash level, and then the Zohar. And uh, I want us to put these in perspective today. Uh, Gary, it's um, from a rabbi's point of view, it's like a visit to the Garden of Eden, mm. isn't it? Yeah, that's what they say. And the Garden of Eden, in rabbinic interpretation, <clears throat> excuse me, rabbinic interpretation says the Garden of Eden is a picture of paradise, J.R., yes. a little foreview of yes. Paradise at large. <clears throat> Man, because of his sin, was driven out of paradise. But the rabbis say they can sneak back in once in a while <laughs> Every now for a little then. glimpse of this, a little glimpse yeah. of that. Yeah. And uh, there are four levels of paradise. Yes. The first level is the simplistic level. It is called <clears throat> Peshat. P-E-S-H-A-T, I guess is the yeah. way we would spell it. Peshat. Peshat. And it, it, it should be said that the Hebrew word for paradise is a four-letter word. We could spell it in English, P-R-D-S. Mm -hmm. And for simplicity's sake, we'll just do that. And those four letters, P-R-D-S, are the initial letters of four levels of Jewish interpretation. The P level, uh, P-R-D-S, Pardes, of paradise is the Peshat you just mentioned. Okay, and since that's the first letter in the mm -hmm. word paradise, mm -hmm. or pardis, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that is the entry level, it, the simple level. It would correspond to what you call the primary interpretation. Yes. Uh, understanding the Word of God at face value. Mm -hmm. And there is a book of Jewish interpretation <coughs> called the Mishnah, which, uh, which are built around seven laws, of, uh, seven laws of Hillel. And these seven laws basically give us that simple interpretation. It's for the average man, for the uneducated, for the simplistic. Uh, there's nothing fancy there. It's just, mm -hmm. in other words, it's the primary interpretation. Read the book. Read the book. That's very simple. Now, among the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are these four levels of interpretation revealed. Mark is this simplistic mm -hmm. level. The Gospel of Mark has no frills. It's just the businessman's da-da-da-da-da, uh, this is it. Mm -hmm. And Mark has that connotation throughout his Gospel, doesn't he? That's right. As a matter of fact, the uh, Mishnaic interpretation of Scripture Invol involving a simple interpretation has a uh, an opening or an introduction which is called zarayim, which means seeds. Uh -huh. And uh, it's interesting that in the parables of Jesus, <clears throat> Mark only mentions two of them, having to do both in both cases with seeds or the act of uh, the gospel being compared with planting seeds, a plant growing up, uh -huh. and then the time of harvest. Mm -hmm. And so... This is the, uh, the first of seven laws of Hillel? That's exactly the right. Mm -hmm. And okay. the Zerayim, or seeds Zerayim. level. And we uh -huh. don't have time to discuss all of them, but Hebrew Christian expositors tell us that they look at Mark as Mishnaic. That is, Mark is a kind of an urgent gospel, as we pointed out on yeah. a, a previous broadcast. It, it moves very quickly. It's a gospel of action, and let's get things done. Yeah. Uses the term straightway and immediately mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on. That's the simplistic way of looking at the Bible. Read the book. And by the way, everybody needs to do that, don't sure. they? Oh, yes. That's the first level. If you want to get into the uh, other levels of interpretation of Scripture, you're going to have to go through that one first. Then comes the second level in, of interpretation, and uh, that deals with the R in paradise, mm -hmm. doesn't it? That's right. P and then R. And uh, we have here the word remez. And this level, remez, is a level that hints at higher things. That is, yeah. you begin to get a glimpse of the deeper spiritual realities. Okay, we move now from the primary interpretation into the practical application. Mm -hmm. This is for the intellectual. This method of interpretation is for the, uh, uh, for the person who has risen above the simple. They've learned to read, mm -hmm. they've learned to uh, think for themselves, uh, they are um, college graduate uh, types. Uh, in other words, they are thinkers. 
And uh, this deals with the 13 laws of Rabbi Ishmael. It is the intellectual level called the Gemara. Mm -hmm. And Gemara means from the teaching. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the Gemara is also uh, uh, concerned with allegory, mm -hmm. with uh, parabolic meanings to some extent, with nobility, and with the aristocracy. It deals with the concepts of, shall we say, the upper stratum of society, politically and spiritually, uh, uh -huh. meaning that there will be some people who will pr pursue the things of God to a greater degree than others. And what we're really looking at here is the Peshat, the children, and uh, the uh, Ramez, the adults. Uh, right. And, and so these two put together become the primary interpretation and the practical application of Scripture. And uh, these two put together, the Mishnah and the Gemara put together, became the Talmud. Mm. And the word Talmud means to study. Right. And the Talmud then became, uh, was simplified in later years to become uh, a, a book called the Halakha. That is the simple law of the way of to do things, mm -hmm. the halakha. And so, if you're eating kosher foods, then, then you're observing halakha. If you're observing Passover or the holy days, then you're observing halakha, the halakha laws, mm -hmm. or that is the laws of the Talmud. And all of these are built around the seven levels of Hillel, the Pishat, and the Ramez, or 13 laws of Rabbi Ishmael, mm -hmm. the primary interpretation and the practical application of Scripture. Now, the Gospel of Mark refers to the Peshat, the simple mm -hmm. level, the Mishnaic level. But mm -hmm. the Gospel of Luke is the intellectual level. Mm -hmm. He, uh, a physician, writes to a philosopher, Theophilus. Right. And yeah. uh, so Luke, we've got uh, this fascinating view. Right here in, in uh, chapter 1 of Luke, verse 3, Luke says, It seemed good to me also, having had a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Well, this is uh, like saying your excellency. Yeah. This is a term of, of recognition, shall we say, of Theophilus yeah. the philosopher. And, Paul, and, and Luke writes here and says, you know, I had a, a, a perfect understanding of things as they were happening. Yeah. And this really reflects that level of teaching, doesn't it? The intellectual it? level. You can even tell from the style of his writing mm -hmm. that he is not short to the point like Mark is. That's right. It's very flowery. It's mm -hmm. almost prose. It's, it's a, uh, a very intellectual way of presenting uh, the life of Christ. So what we're looking at here is a Peshat, Gospel of Mark, interpretation of the life of Christ, the simple level of the life of Christ, then Luke's um, Ramez hint level, allegorical level, intellectual level mm -hmm. uh, interpretation of the life of Christ. Then there is the third and fourth levels of Jewish interpretation, which get into what we call the prophetic implication of Scripture. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, but the Jews divide it into two levels. We call it the primary uh, implication, but the Jews have two levels here, and the first of those two levels is the drosh, mm. uh, which means to thresh. Absolutely. And of course from that came a book called the Midrash, mm -hmm. or Midrash. Midrash meaning from threshing. Uh -huh. And this is a beautiful picture in a way, because if you take a head of wheat in your hands, J.R., and I'm sure you've even had an opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. And you put that head of wheat in your hands, you crunch it up, and you blow, and, and rub it a little more and blow. Mm -hmm. uh, you will blow away all of the, uh, the husks and the part of the, of the grain that you don't need. And l your hand will then have some beautiful grains in it, or seeds. This is a process of threshing to get to the kernels of truth. So it's yes. a beautiful picture, isn't it? Yes, and it is above the average person's view of Scripture. Uh, it's those little nuggets that we're looking for, isn't it? It certainly So that's is. the prophetic implication of Scripture. Mm -hmm. We would call this the exegetical level, mm -hmm. the exegesis of the Bible. In fact, it is the majestic or kingly level. It is the regal level of viewing the Bible. And this regal or majestic or kingly level of the life of Christ is shown in the Gospel of Matthew. Mm. Matthew being a tax collector, mm -hmm. a, a government worker, would deal obviously with this regal level, wouldn't it? 
That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, the relationship between government and the priest king, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to announce himself as king. And it's interesting that a Levite would record this story. That mm -hmm. is uh, Matthew. <laughs> yes. In fact, you see, Luke in his intellectual study of mm -hmm. the life of Christ mm -hmm. gives his genealogy all the way back to Adam. Yes. But Matthew, in his regal or majestic or kingly, kingly view of the life of Christ, gives the genealogy of the king mm -hmm. going back then to Abraham, to Abraham only. Because Abraham was the father of the Jewish nation and mm -hmm. the Jews are going to rule the world, folks, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or mm -hmm. not. When Jesus, a Jew, sits upon a throne of the world in his capital of the mm -hmm. world called Jerusalem, he's going to put Israel at the head of the nations. <laughs> An incredible oh, yeah. concept here, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, here we're getting to what in Christian theology would be called exegetical level, exegesis, meaning it really has, would have the same uh, meaning as to thresh. Mm -hmm. uh, exegesis involves looking at the word structure, the grammar of uh, the original texts, uh, the uh, history of the language, the history of the people, combining all of this to come to the highest possible meaning of those words. Mm -hmm. Deep, deep study is required. Yes. And it is, it is the Jewish view. The Jewish view. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because prophecy deals with God's dealing with the Jews. Uh, when he says, I'm going to bring you back in the last days. When the prophets of the Old Testament say, Behold, the day of the Lord is at hand. It's a time when God is going to bring Israel back home to their promised land mm -hmm. and make them the head of the nations and Messiah is going to come and rule over the earth with a rod of iron for a thousand years. And of course, in Christianity, we're looking forward to that wonderful time when we shall rule and reign with Christ. But basically, we're talking about us becoming a part of the commonwealth of Israel's inheritance. That is, when Jesus comes and establishes the Jewish kingdom. Now, at what the Jews call the Midrashic level, that is, from threshing, mm -hmm. uh, you get into an interpretation of parables, J.R. Yeah. Uh, this is, means to take a parable and to extract from it all of its possible meanings. It's interesting that Matthew is highly developed around parables. Yes, it is. And these are parables of the kingdom. They certainly see. are. And Matthew, of course, being originally written in Hebrew, would be that Jewish view mm -hmm. of the future. And one reason I think why Gentile Christianity, for the most part, mainline Christianity does not deal with prophecy is because they don't understand it. Uh, they think in, uh, the average Christian theologian believes in replacement theology, mm -hmm. that we have replaced Israel. Israel has been forever forsaken by God, and Gentile Christianity has taken over all of the uh, promises that were given to Israel. We've inherited everything that belongs to Israel. That's just simply not so. The Jew is still the chosen people of God, and they have a great future. And uh, Jesus is coming back not to New York City, but to Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Jr. one of the reasons that we have spent some time developing these studies around Jewish methods of interpretation is to show that the Jews are not blind to Scripture. The Jews are blinded in part, and, and the area in which they are blinded is the identity of the Messiah. We know Him yes. to be the Lord Jesus Christ, and they take issue with us on that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to interpreting Scripture, uh, their methods of interpretation, centuries old and developed around highly systematized rules. You, can't, uh, you cannot break outside of the bounds of the rules of interpretation that they have yeah. set up. Now, this third level of Jewish interpretation we're talking about goes beyond Peshat, the first letter in paradise, and Ramez, the second letter in paradise, to Drosh, from the D, the third letter in paradise. And we've gone from the primary interpretation through the practical application to the, prim to the uh, prophetic implication of Scripture in drosh. And from the word drosh, meaning to thresh, has come the word midrosh, from threshing. And uh, this book called the Midrash, or Midrash, um, deals with the 32 laws of Rabbi Eliezer ben Galel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, this method of interpretation uh, has 
has been uh, built up from these 32 laws. Mm -hmm. Now, let us move quickly into the fourth level. This is the innermost part mm -hmm. of paradise. This is the highest level of paradise, according to Jewish theology. And according to mm -hmm. Hebrew Christian uh, interpreters, this brings us to the fourth gospel, the gospel of John. Yes. And this is the level that corresponds to the S, P-R-D-S, mm -hmm. Pardes, or paradise. The S level is called Sod. And this is the level of, uh, as we would call it, mysticism, transcendentalism, looking and, and trying as hard as we can through a deep study of God's Word to see the person and nature of God and His plan. Now the rabbis tell a story, it puts it this way. They say just before the sun comes up in the morning, it, you, first you see the rays of the sun, like the horns or the fingers of the sun rays coming up. But mm -hmm. when the sun comes up, those rays disappear. So this radiance of the sun, just at uh, either at uh, uh, just before sunrise or just after sunset, uh, is that mystical level of the Zohar, the radiance mm -hmm. of the Shekinah, or the Shekinah, the aura, shall we say. And um, this takes us then to the 42 laws of uh, Rabbi Simeon ben Yochai. At the close of the first century, at the beginning of the second century, he wrote 42 laws which became the foundation or the basis of what later became the Zohar, the mm -hmm. Kabbalah the mystical uh, Jews. How can we put it in uh, yeah, I think Jewish mysticism is, is perfectly permissible and, by the way, uh, at the highest levels of Christianity we have Christian mysticism. Nothing uh, occultic here. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about in, in Christian mysticism is uh, a deep study, devotional life, devotion through prayer and Bible study to discern the nature and the plan of God. Now, mm -hmm. this level, J.R., brings up the question once again of balance. Yes. The balance between primary interpretation and a deep study yes. of the prophetic in implications. Now, to the to the Jewish mystic was given the spirit of prophecy. So this is the fourth level, second level of prophecy. It is the highest level according to Jewish uh, rabbis, rabbinical interpretation. And the fascinating part about this is the Gospel of John deals with these, this method of interpretation. We're talking about um, mm -hmm. um, acronyms. We're talking about yeah. gematria, the study of numbers. Yes. I heard a minister on the radio this morning say, uh, speak of uh, th there's seven mentions of the ark in the Old Testament. And remember he said the number seven is the number of perfection. Well, this is, this is that level of, it's of interpretation. It's this mystical or divine level of interpretation. And John begins, in the beginning was the Word. Yes. And he begins the exposition on the Word, which Hebrew Christian expositors, J.R., say is remarkably similar to the study of God's Word, the Torah, as accomplished by Jewish mystics. And so they put John in this category of mysticism. Yeah, John not only wrote a, the mystical Gospel of John, but he wrote the mystical revelation of Jesus Christ. The apocalypse. You can't get more uh, mystical than that, can you? That's very true. And uh, in fact, John had a, what shall we call an out-of-the-body experience as he was taken up in the Spirit into heaven. That's right. And to, to see these things and to write about them. Uh, and yet, in Christian theology, we take the Gospel of John and give it to baby Christians. We take what the Jews have on the highest shelf yeah. and put it down on the lowest shelf. That's right. So that Christians can understand, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That sounds simple to you, but I want you to know it reaches into this uh, center of paradise. Oh, yes. Right to the highest mountain of paradise. and pulls it down for the believer, for the Christian, for the Gentile to say, God loves you, Jesus died for you, trust Him, He'll give you eternal life. And the rabbis say, what? <laughs> you don't understand. Oh. <laughs> well, how else can I put it? They say it's a bribe, this John 3.16, and that that's against the halakha. Well, it's an incredible study, 
But these are the four methods of Jewish interpretation, and we can see them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We'll be back in just a moment. This is America's foremost prophetic monthly, Prophecy in the News. You can get a free introductory subscription to Prophecy in the News just by calling this number, 1-800-475-1111. Each month, J.R. Church and the research team give you the news from a prophetic perspective. At least two full-length prophetic studies are included in every issue, plus commentaries on important subjects, education, politics, economics, science. Keep up with the events in Europe and the Middle East by ordering your free introductory subscription to Prophecy in the News right now. Just pick up your phone and dial this toll-free number, 1-800-475-1111. Operators are standing by right now to take your call. If the phone is busy, keep trying. You'll get through, and you'll be glad you did. The newspaper is free, the call is free, so what are you waiting for? Here's that toll-free number again, 1-800-475-1111. Ask for the free introductory subscription to Prophecy in the News. Now, you may be wondering, why have we reviewed these four methods of Jewish interpretation of Scripture, especially these four views of the life of Christ? I think it's important that we deal with that question. Gary? Well, J.R., prophetically speaking, we are moving into the time when Israel comes into preeminency. Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, is coming back, and His people will need to be prepared. Now, we understand that the four levels of Jewish interpretation apply to the four Gospels. Those four Gospels are centered around the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and really there are four ways to appreciate His work. And I, it's my feeling that, that the Jewish people are ready in these days to hear about the ways that their traditional methods of interpretation fit with the traditions of the life of Christ. Can you imagine what would happen if the Jewish people saw the life of Christ in the light of these four methods of Jewish interpretation? They would be astounded. If they saw all of the things that we have shared with you over the last six or seven weeks mm -hmm. on our television program, they, I believe, would be astounded. And even though they uh, have something within them that says, no, he can't be the Messiah. One of these days, they're going to have to face the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of the Jews. And uh, so there's 144,000 out there somewhere, Jews, who need to hear this, who need to understand that Mark is the Pachette view of Christ, that Luke gives the Ramez view of Christ, that Matthew gives the Drosh view of Christ, and John gives the Sod view of Christ. And when they see that, they will accept him. This is J.R. Church and Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up.